Hi gang! Electricity comes in many forms. AC, DC, electrostatic, lightning, arc, sparks, and so on. So many that people sometimes don't realize that at the very core, they're all the same thing. So I'll talk about what electricity is, and show how all these forms are just different sides of the same coin. Let's start with the answer to what is electricity. Electricity is a set of phenomena having to do with charge. What's charge? Charge is a property of the particles found in and around atoms. Using the orbital model of atoms, we have protons in the nucleus of the atom and electrons around the nucleus. The protons have a positive charge, and the electrons have a negative charge. If you have the same number of protons as you have electrons, then the number of charges are the same. But if you remove an electron, then the atom has an overall positive charge. Similarly, if we bring in an extra electron, then it has an overall negative charge. In both cases, the number of each type of charge is unbalanced. We say the atom is charged or has an electric charge. And since that atom is charged, we call it an ion. Things happen when you have an unbalanced charge. Like charges repel each other. So two electrons, both having a negative charge, repel each other. And unlike charges attract each other. So a positively charged atom will attract a negatively charged electron. So once again, the definition of electricity is a set of phenomena having to do with this charge. Let's start with the first of those phenomena, DC electricity. DC stands for direct current, and it means that the charges, the charged electrons in this case, are moving in one direction, such as through a wire. The movement is actually fairly chaotic, but overall they move in one direction. Batteries are one way to produce DC electricity, so anything that runs off a battery uses DC electricity. A mobile phone is a common example. When you connect wires to the terminals of each battery, the chemistry inside the battery starts moving ions, or charged atoms, between the battery terminals. At the same time, electrons move in the wires connected to those terminals. The result is DC electricity, with electrons flowing in one direction through the wire. As long as the chemistry in the battery is suitable, this will keep happening. The electrons don't actually move very fast. Think of it as pushing on a row of marbles. The marbles don't go fast, but the effect of the electromagnetic forces are propagated at close to the speed of light, and is felt at the other end seemingly right away. That's why when you turn on a switch, the light turns on seemingly right away. AC electricity stands for alternating current. In that case, the electrons move in one direction, then reverse direction, and then reverse again. They alternate in directions. Anything that you plug into a wall socket in your house uses AC electricity. Though, if you're plugging in an adapter, most adapters convert electricity from AC to DC. You can see that if you read the label. The input usually says AC, but for the output, instead of saying DC, it often has this horizontal line with a dashed line under it, which means DC. What generates that AC electricity? There are a number of sources, such as nuclear power plants, hydroelectric plants, and coal-fired plants. But all these basically use some method to run electric generators. Here's an example of one type of electric generator. It has a rotor, which rotates, in this case a ring of magnets, and a stator, which remains stationary, in this case has coils of wire on it. In the case of hydroelectric power, water turns a turbine, which turns the rotor. As the rotor's magnets pass the wires of the coils, the magnetic field causes electrons to move in the wires. The magnets and coils are arranged such that the interaction will cause the electrons to move back and forth producing AC electricity. In a solar power system, the solar panels produce DC electricity. At some point in the system, that DC is converted to AC electricity using something called an inverter. The inverter can do that directly from the solar panels, or the solar panels can charge batteries, and the inverter can then take DC from the batteries and convert it to AC. A form of electricity that causes some confusion is electrostatic, or static electricity. That's the electricity that gives you a shock when you rub your socks against a carpet, and then touch a doorknob. When you rub your socks against the carpet, you're making use of something called the triboelectric effect. Depending on the materials, that transfers electrons between your socks and the carpet. Now that the bottom of your socks are charged, electrons are attracted from your body towards the socks, leaving a positive charge elsewhere. Because the charges are stationary after that, we call it static electricity, or electrostatics. The doorknob isn't charged, meaning there's an imbalance between the charge on you and the charge on the doorknob. When you get close enough, a spark occurs between the two. 
equalizing the amount of charge between you and the doorknob. Another source of static electricity is an electrostatic generator, like a Van de Graaff generator. A Van de Graaff generator has static charges on a moving belt inside, which are then transferred to a dome, where they become static too. In a Wimshurst machine, static charges exist on the sectors on the Wimshurst machine's disk. A spark is another form of electricity. Going back to our finger and doorknob example, your body was positively charged. As you bring your finger nearer to the doorknob, electrons in the doorknob are attracted to your finger. But the air between them is not electrically conductive, meaning that no charge crosses. An electric field exists between the charges. And the more charges there are, the stronger the electric field. That electric field pulls electrons from the atoms in the air, attracting the electrons towards the positive side, and making the air more conductive. The strong field also pulls electrons from the doorknob, and finally the air becomes conductive enough that there's a sudden rush of electrons from the doorknob. And that's the spark. It ends quickly, because the charge on your body balances with the charge on the doorknob. And lightning is the same effect. It restores the balance of charge between the storm clouds and the ground. But sometimes we get an arc instead. An arc is like a spark, but there's no shortage of charge, so it keeps going. That's the case with this homemade high voltage power supply. A gas discharge is also something you might get instead of a spark. It's like an arc in that there's no shortage of charge, so it keeps going, but there's less charge than with an arc. Instead, it appears as a glowing gas between the two sides, or electrodes. Here we have a model of the Star Wars TIE Fighter, with high voltage electrodes spaced apart. The gas discharge is flowing between the two electrodes. And sometimes there's a strong enough electric field to ionize the air around only one of the electrodes and so the ions don't get far. That's called a corona discharge, and often appears around sharp points where high voltage is involved. Here we're experimenting with high voltage capacitors, but there's some unwanted corona at the sharp points where two wires are connected together poorly. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel for more informative videos like this. You can support these videos either through Patreon or through a one-time donation. And if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up, share with your social media, or leave a question or a comment below. See you soon!